two days ago. So just real quick, on another foreign policy one. So in in, in Geneva, uh, I'm sorry, in uh, Vienna now, there's this discussion about having or U.S. and Iranian uh, negotiators are to be in Vienna at the same time, but not meeting directly. Right. Can you say a word about what you expect to come out of that shuttle diplomacy and how soon you think you could actually sit down at the table together with the Iranians? Sure. Well, for, everyone, for people who haven't been following it as closely as you, let me catch you up. Uh, we've agreed to participate in talks with our European, Russian, and Chinese partners to identify the issues involved in a mutual return to compliance with the JCPOA with Iran. This is a welcome uh, and potentially constructive early step, even if the dip diplomatic road ahead may be long, as it was uh, during the first negotiations around the JCPOA. We are very clear-eyed about the hurdles that remain. Uh, these talks will be structured around working groups that the EU is going to form with the remaining partners in the JCPOA, including Iran. And the primary issues that will be discussed are the nuclear steps that Iran would need to take in order to return to compliance with the JCPOA, and the sanctions relief steps the United States would need to take in order to return to compliance as well. We don't anticipate presently uh, that there will be direct talks between the United States and Iran through the process, though we certainly remain open to them. Go ahead, Ken. On the southern border of the United States, uh, Customs and Border Protection has some new preliminary numbers about unaccompanied minors crossing in March, and they are way, way up. 18,500, uh, again, preliminary number, but a big jump, suggesting it's more than seasonal, suggesting it's more than uh, just the conditions on the ground. Is there a sense now that uh, the administration needs to do something different in terms of the message of this is not the time to come, but children who are unaccompanied will be protected and cared for and be able to stay? Is there any movement on that as the message? That continues to be our message, and we continue to look for ways to uh, project it uh, more broadly and more effectively in the region. But that is a sliver of what our efforts are, and we don't feel that simply telling people with more PSAs uh, not to come, that that is going to be uh, the only way to reduce the number of people who are taking the journey. So in addition to that, we of course have these conversations that started last week that are that will be ongoing and will continue with our envoy and our officials who will be working uh, within uh, with governments and officials in the Northern Triangle to talk about addressing conditions and talk about reducing the temptation to travel. Some of that will of course be aid and assistance and a discussion of that. The president's proposed four billion dollars in his own plan, uh, but some of it will be of course continuing to communicate directly with the region, uh, and we also. Uh, we'll continue to reiterate that our policy remains in place in terms of uh, implementing uh, Title 42 authority and that the vast majority of adults are turned away. These numbers are certainly, um, you know, uh, it, it, we, we are not naive about the challenge, but what our focus is on is solutions and actions to help address the unaccompanied minors who are coming across the border and making it uh, less of an incentive to come, including also uh, continuing to implement the Central American Minors Program so kids can apply and un people under 18 can apply.